useless loser becomes a skeleton but starts evolving into a high-rank monster. Rent is an ugly, pathetic, disgusting loser adventurer from a small town who dreams about becoming a Mitral-class adventurer. Yet, despite working for 10 years, Rent has been a dumb bronze-class adventurer for eternity. He usually wakes up early just like me and all poor people who need to work. Yet, despite having a dream job, all he can do are basic missions. This is because the Adventurer Guild puts ranks on their missions to avoid unnecessary deaths. While checking the current missions, Rent realizes they're all pretty much trash. Therefore, he decides to explore the labyrinth. However, despite the labyrinth being deserted because everyone already cleared it, Rent is surprised when he sees a secret passageway. He gets hyped, thinking he can report this discovery to the guild and become rich. However, this pathetic excuse of a human decides to explore it, hoping to find treasures. He manages to enter a room where he sees a huge dragon. He thinks this is the greatest type of monster, and according to the legends they have several forms, and this one follows the rock's workout program. The dragon starts to approach him, and Rent cannot move otherwise he will wet himself. In the end, this huge dragon with two mouths takes a huge bite on his breakfast. However, hours later Rent manages to get up, surprised to be alive. However, when he looks at his reflection, he notices that he has become an uglier skeleton. After the shock, he wonders if he's truly alive until he realizes that he has become an undead monster. He thinks about returning to the town because he still has his human memories. However, if a bishop or a priest finds him, they will destroy him with their magic. He realizes the dragon is missing and decides to get out of the room to avoid a potential double kill. As he walks, Rent explains that nobody knows where the labyrinths come from or how they work. They only know there are many around the world with treasures inside. Rent thinks about waiting for a new adventurer to come to this labyrinth and ask for help however, he's just a pile of bones who cannot talk. Suddenly, another skeleton appears and confronts Rent. Rent wants to defeat it with his sword, but recognizes that it's hard to move his body without any muscles. He raises his sword to strike this skeleton, but he ends up falling behind. Yet, the other skeleton also suffers from calcium deficit as it trips after losing its leg bone. Rent realizes that it's going to be hard to deal with a monster without sword techniques or muscles. He then suddenly finds out that he can still use spirit energy to buff up his physical attributes despite not being human. With this buff, he manages to destroy the skull and sees the bone pile glow with some pixie powder. He finds out that he just recovered the spirit energy he used and remembers his talk with his friend Lorraine. She is a researcher who told him that monsters could evolve into other species. At that time, she mentioned that skeletons could sometimes evolve into ghouls, calling it existential evolution. After this memory, Rent thinks that if he can evolve into a ghoul, he can get some flesh back. He then could use some clothes to cover himself and return to the town without any problems. Therefore, Rent decides to start defeating monsters in this labyrinth for a chance to evolve. He quickly manages to defeat five skeletons and manages to get some of his mobility back. Every time he defeats an enemy he gets healed and that allows him to use his spirit energy in every battle. While looking for more monsters he finds a slime. Despite being a weak monster, there are only two ways to defeat it to pierce its core or beat it up until it cannot regenerate. Rent manages to dodge the slime's attack and counters however, he didn't expect to hit the core on his first try. He decides to keep the magic stone and collects the slime fluid to sell it later on as it's used in cosmetics. Over time, Rent notices that as an undead he doesn't need to sleep or eat which helps him to focus on fighting to achieve his evolution. However, that seems to be taking a long time. Still, he managed to get his physical abilities back and could use mana and divine power again despite being undead. Yet he feels down because he spent 10 years as a weak adventurer and now is dead. He's one of the rare adventurers who can use spirit energy, mana, and divine power, but since he's trash, they're all basic. He wished he could be strong and achieve his goal of becoming Mitral class, which is the highest adventurer class. Yet, he decides that being a skeleton won't stop him from reaching his dream. He starts taking out more monsters and realizes he's getting stronger than when he was a human. After defeating another slime, Rent notices the power seems quite different. Suddenly, his body starts to change, creating muscles, hair, skin, and even eyes. He realizes he managed to evolve into a ghoul, and he can now make sounds with his mouth. He feels happy that he finally has some flesh hugging his bones despite it being pretty dry. However, this makes him realize that if he keeps working hard, he might be able to become a high-rank undead like a vampire. 
he first decides to speak some words, but all it comes out is a roar. With some training, he manages to say hello and good morning, however, he still needs to practice to sound less like a zombie. Since Rent evolved into a ghoul, he can now strengthen his sword as well. He hears the clang of swords in the distance and checks it out. It's a girl fighting off skeleton monsters, but she looks exhausted. She finally defeats it. She proceeds deeper into the dungeon and Rent watches her. He doesn't recognize her, so he thinks she must be a rookie. She goes down a corridor and a skeleton monster forms behind her. She engages it in combat and Rent notices that she has good form, but she's weak. The skeleton monster grips her sword and pushes her against the wall. Rent has no choice but to step in. He comes out screaming to get the skeleton's attention, and the skeleton faces him. Rent was hoping the girl would attack the skeleton from behind, but she was too stunned to do so. The skeleton tries to attack him, but Rent takes it down. He tries to talk to her, but she's horrified by his appearance. He tries to introduce himself, but she tells him to stay away from her. He throws his sword down and raises his arms to assure her. She notices he's not a mere ghoul, and Rent tells her he's an adventurer. He tells her he actually passed away, but he's still somehow alive. She thanks him for saving her life, and he tells her he had to because adventurers look out for each other. She still doesn't trust him, so she asks him not to take her life away. He assures her that he won't do that, but he needs her to help him get some clothes. He tells her that he wants to go back to the city, and she tells him she could get him a robe that hides his body. He puts a bag of coins on the ground and tells her to keep the change. She moves forward to pick up the bag and introduces herself as Rena. He leads her back to the entrance of the dungeon, and she tells him she will be back for him. Typically, a proper adventurer would report the sight of a ghoul to the guild for immediate action, but he doesn't think she'll betray him. Rena goes back to the city and meets up with Sheila, the adventurer's guild receptionist. Rena tells her a lot has happened and she has an urgent question for her. Meanwhile, Rent is engaged in combat with a glob monster. The monster throws some globs at Rent, but he dodges it. He notices he's not just stronger, but his body also moves just as he wants it to. He strikes at the moving core of the monster and destroys it easily. Rent thinks that his combat intuition got better after becoming a ghoul. Suddenly, he hears Rena's voice calling his name. As he approaches him, she pulls out her sword and takes a few steps back, asking him if he's Rent or a random ghoul. He tells her he's Rent, and she eases up, saying he has gotten better at talking. He tells her he practiced while she was away. She shows him the robe and backs up. Rent looks at her, and she apologizes, telling him she's still a bit scared. She tells him she needs more time to get used to him, and he tells her it's fine for her to feel like that. He picks up the robe and tells Rena it's perfect. She tells him she also bought other things she thought he might need. A pair of gloves, shoes, and some bandages. She tells him she bought those to hide his arms and legs from sight. Rent thinks Rena is very kind and tires them on. It's much easier for Rent to move in the clothes than he thought it would be. Though the hood makes him lose some visibility. She holds up a mirror for him, but he still thinks he stands out too much. Rena brings out a mask, mentioning that she was prepared for it. The mask attaches itself magically to his face. Rena tells him he looks great, but he tries to get the mask off and it doesn't come off. He tells her he can't get it off, and she apologizes. She tells him it was shockingly cheap and Rent figures out that it's cursed. He tries to dispel it with his divinity, but he runs out of energy. Rena apologizes for bringing him a cursed item, but he tells her it's fine since he has to hide his face anyway. He tells her he just has to hire a cleric to break the curse. Rent walks up to her, trying to reassure her by patting her shoulder, but he thinks he may be too intrusive and back up. She grabs his hand and tells him he's a good person, and she's not scared of him anymore. She tells him they can now head back to the city, and they leave the dungeon. They arrive at the city, but Rent is reluctant to follow Rena because a lot of people in the city know him. They'll know something is wrong if he shows them his ID at the gate. She asks him if they can go through another gate, and he tells her there's one that's not frequently used. She tells him they better head for that gate. The guards allow Rent to pass and Rent thanks Rena. Rena is distracted by a carriage and Rent uses that opportunity to disappear. Rena begins looking for him, but he hides on the roof. Rent doesn't want to ruin her guild life, so he decides to stay away from her. Later at night, Rent goes to a house in search of someone who can help him. Since he couldn't work with Rena, he had to find someone who could keep secrets. It knocks on the door, but no one answers so he lets himself in. He sees Lorraine sleeping on the couch and tries to wake her up. 
She tells him to let her sleep more, but he threatens to drop a book on her head. She sits up and is shocked by his weird appearance. She thinks it's just a mask, but he takes off his glove to show her his ghoul hand. Lorraine is contemplating putting up a search request at the Adventurer Guild. Suddenly she hears a familiar knock on the door and she knows it's Rent. But Rent doesn't enter immediately so she knows something must have happened to him, but she's glad he's alive. She lies down on the couch and pretends to be asleep. Rent opens the door and he comes over to the couch to wake her up. She tells him to allow her to sleep some more, but he threatens to wake her up in a brutal way. She finally opens her eyes to look at Rent, and she realizes he's now a ghoul. Rent tells her the story of what happened to him, but Lorraine doesn't believe him. She has been researching monsters and magic, and she had never come across a scenario where someone was turned into an undead after being eaten by a dragon. She asks him if the dragon is still in the labyrinth, and he tells her the dragon is probably already gone. Lorraine has no choice but to believe his story because of how he now looks. Rent is surprised by how calm Lorraine is after seeing his body up close, but he feels like she'll treat him as a research subject rather than a friend. Lorraine paces for a while thinking and suddenly, she asks Rent if he still remembers his identity now that he's undead. Rent tells her he still has the memories and consciousness of himself before he became an undead. But that doesn't change the fact that he's lost his life once. He tells her he's not very sure he's still the same person, and she tells him that's exactly how the rent she knows would reply. Though it's still hard to confirm he's the same person, she tells him they'll worry about that later. She asks him what he plans to do with his life, and he tells her he wants to continue living as an adventurer. He aims to achieve the highest rank in the guild, but he knows he can't go to the guild looking like an undead. Lorraine figures out that he needs her to take up quests for him, and he'll have to crash at her place for a while. She asks him if that's okay with him, and he tells her he's fine with that. But she asks for his help with her research. She doesn't want to miss the opportunity to examine a subject that underwent an existential evolution. Rent tells her he's fine with it as long as she doesn't dissect him. She tells him she's not Frankenstein, but she'll need a little bit of skin once in a while. The next day, Rent is doing some chores when Lorraine comes back to the house. She tells him she went to the guild, and she gives him the payment for the slime liquids and magic crystals he got from the labyrinth. Rent thinks he was overpaid for the resources, but she tells him they were of good quality and the guild will put them to good use. He takes the payment and tells her he will be going to see an infamous blacksmith. Later in the day, Rent walks through the market district, happy his wallet is so full. As he walks along the street, he draws the gaze of other people who are shopping. He notices their gaze fixed on him, and he tries to hide his face better. He finally arrives at the blacksmith shop, and he's welcomed by the receptionist. She notices his outfit, and she's a bit surprised. Rent apologizes for his suspicious look. She asks him what he wants, and he drops his sword on the counter and tells her he needs a new one. She unsheathes the sword and looks at its edges. She notices the sword was treated well, but it has been overused. She asks him if he uses magic or spirit energy and he tells her he uses mana, spirit, and divinity magic. She is surprised he is thrice blessed because they are very rare. She tells him there's only one other customer who is thrice blessed and Rent asks her to keep his a secret. He presents her with a bag of coins asking if it would be sufficient. She tells him it'll suffice, but he only has to pay half first, then pay the balance after the sword is ready. But she warns him that her husband is a perfectionist and he would need several days to make the sword. She also tells him her husband may call him several times to get his opinions on how he wants his sword to look. He tells her he doesn't mind and that they can reach him if they contact Lorraine's place. Meanwhile, Lorraine is at home reading a book about ghouls. She finds out their preferred meals and how they are formed. She also finds out that ghouls which are turned by other powerful monsters tend to lose their memories and human emotions. She closes the book as she now knows that Ren's case is very special. She's still not sure he is the same person he was before he was turned, but he still feels like the same Rent she has always known. She remembered when she was younger, and she took a quest at the guild. A man stopped her and found out her quest would be taking her to a forest far away from the city. He offers up young Rent to be her pack bearer for free, so he can gain some experience since he was still a rookie. They arrive at the forest and Lorraine is in search of a particular herb, but she can't find it. She wonders if her quest description texts were wrong. Back then the world was boring to Lorraine, and though she was the youngest to attain the title of Great Doctor, it didn't mean much to her. 
but the title allowed her to register as a silver rank adventurer. After getting the title, she quickly left for the city of Yorlin to gather some herbs since she had nothing better to do. She finally found the herb she was looking for, and she harvested it carefully to preserve its usefulness. She packed it up and told young Rent to put it in her pack. He takes the pack to her, and she's surprised to find it almost full with the same herbs she had been struggling to find. She asks him how he was able to find the herb and harvest it correctly, but Rent is distracted by something in the forest. She glances at the direction he's looking at to see a goblin notching an arrow into its bow. Young Rent raises his shield to defend her, and he tells her to use a spell against the goblin. She uses the spell to completely obliterate the goblin. Young Rent praises her magic level, but she tells him it's nothing special. After the battle, he offers her some water, asking if that was her first battle. She tells him it was not but her escorts aren't usually as experienced. She realizes that Young Rent is more than a pack bearer. He tells her the other adventurers were worried, she didn't have enough experience for her rank, so they told him to follow her. She asked him how he knew so much about herbs. He told her someone advised him to read about everything he could find concerning herbs and monsters if he wanted to become a good adventurer. This was when they first introduced themselves to each other, and they became friends. Lorraine asks him to teach her all he knows about herbs and how to fight. She noticed he knew exactly how to move through the forest, and she asked him for the trick behind it. He promised to teach her everything, and he worked hard for ten years since they'd known each other, trying to achieve the highest adventure rank. Lorraine stayed by his side doing the research she had loved all this time. She now sees why the elders were worried about her years ago. She realizes she hasn't been replying to her letter because didn't want some old men to lecture her. She gets up from her chair, wondering where she kept her unread letters. Rent meets with the blacksmith, and he thanks him for making him a new sword. The blacksmith promises to make him something special, and they shake on it. His wife presents Rent with a temporary sword to use before his own is ready. The sword can only use mana and spirit energy. He takes the sword and leaves. The blacksmith tells his wife Rent may be in some trouble, and she wonders why he didn't ask for their help. The husband tells her he's probably suffering from a curse and he doesn't want it to affect their shop. He figured out that Rent didn't want to cause trouble for other people. He asks his wife for the information Rent shared with her, and she tells him. He tells her they may get him to talk about his curse one day, since he will be frequenting their shop. Rent returns home, and he makes dinner for him and Lorraine. Lorraine enjoys his cooking, and he tells her she can't have seconds if she wants. She notices he hasn't touched his dinner, and he tells her he doesn't get hungry. She takes that as a good sign. She tells him she was studying about ghouls while he was away, and she tells him he's different from an average ghoul. That's the reason he can evolve, and she asks him what he will become next. He tells her he just wants to be as human as possible, so he'll just aim for his next existential evolution. Lorraine figures out he has to return to the labyrinth, and he tells her he has to destroy monsters to evolve faster. The next day, an adventurer is fighting a slime monster in the labyrinth, but he's no match for it. He's about to be completely overwhelmed by the monster, but it suddenly melts away. Rent saves the man and the man thanks him. He tells Rent he didn't expect the slime to attack like that, and though he got a little cut, he'll be fine. Rent begins to walk away since adventurers are expected to take care of themselves. The man tries to stop Rent, but Rent doesn't listen to him. Rent had heard of people who pretend to be in a sticky situation and then rob those who help them. The man runs in front of Rent and asks to join his party. He tells him he needs the money because he just registered as an adventurer and can't even fight a slime. Rent tells him slimes are strong, and they always give swordsmen a tough time. The man tells Rent he's a chef, and he has a restaurant. He's in a huge debt that he needs to repay by the next week. He told every adventurer he met he'll do anything they ask as long as they let him join their party, but no one gave him a chance. He decided to explore the labyrinth by himself, but only strong people can do that and get away with it. Rent tells him he's too busy, and the man watches him walk away. Rent would have loved to let the man join him, but he didn't see him with any useful magic items. He suddenly has an idea, and he tells the man he can tag along as long as he's okay with carrying a pack. The man suddenly rushes to follow Rent, happy to finally join a party. Rent doesn't know if the guy is a good or a bad guy, but he figures it can't hurt to help someone. The man tells Rent he will do whatever he commands. They keep walking through the labyrinth, and they get to a part that the man thinks is a dead end, but Rent tells him to trust him. The man is surprised to see a corridor that the map says is a dead end. 
They walk through the corridor and arrive at an opening, and the man is surprised such a place exists in the labyrinth. Rent is even more surprised that there's no dragon in sight. They explore the opening and Rent is disappointed, he didn't find any magic items. The man calls out to Rent telling him he found a little gap on the walls. They look through the gap to find a hidden corridor. The man tells Rent they can make a fortune if they tell the guild about the secret passage. He tells Rent he'll tell everyone it was Rent who found it, but Rent tells him he's not interested in glory and the man can take the credit for finding it. Rent enters the passage and asks the man to follow him. They find an empty room and the man enters it. He tells Rent they can look for another secret passage or a hidden treasure since no one had ever come to that section before. Rent tells him to wait, but he doesn't hear Rent over his babbling. Rent enters the room and a teleportation circle activates at the center of the room. He tries to warn the man, but the man tells him not to worry because there are no monsters in sight. Rent realizes the man can't see the circle, and he tries to stop him, but he steps on it and he's teleported away. Rent knows a teleportation circle leads to a room filled with monsters or traps, and he considers leaving the man to his fate. But he doesn't want to be more of a monster than he already is. He steps on the circle which teleports him to a dark room. He sees the man on the floor, and he tries to help him, but he hears the feet of a monster stomp on the ground. A giant skeleton appears from the shadows, and Rent realizes the skeleton is an area boss. Rent has no choice but to face the huge undead skeleton. He tries a spirit attack on it, but it's ineffective. The skeleton tries to strike back, but Rent dodges away. He decides to try a mana attack, but it's also ineffective against the skeleton. The skeleton tries to counterattack, but Rent gets out of the way. Now Rent is getting desperate, he looks for an escape route, but the entrance is sealed. Since he's in a boss room, he'll have to defeat the skeleton before he can get out. Rent curses his bad luck as the skeleton starts approaching him. Rent remembers the adventurer's code never to give up regardless of the situation. Though Rent is not sure his sword can handle it, he decides to use his divinity skill. He attacks the skeleton with the skill, and he takes out its leg. The skeleton loses its balance and falls to the ground and Rent uses that opportunity to run up its spine and land a final blow on the skeleton's skull. He tends to his followers' wounds and the man wakes up. He remembers there was a huge skeleton before he passed out, and he almost panics. Rent tells him he can only do basic first aid and can't heal his wounds fully. The man looks around and sees the remains of the skeleton. He asks Rent if he defeated the skeleton alone, and Rent shows him the huge magical crystal the skeleton dropped. The man figured out that the monster was very tough for it to drop such a huge crystal. He commends Rent for being skillful enough to defeat the monster solo. Rent tells him it was just luck, and he tells the man he'll hand him the crystal if he wants. His follower can't believe his ears, but Rent tells him it'll come at a price. His follower asks Rent what he wants in return because he feels he can't be of much use to Rent after seeing how strong an adventurer he is. Rent shows the man he's now a ghoul after being attacked by the dragon in the past. He tells the man he can't enter the shops in the guild because of that so he'll need him to do that in his stead. The man agrees to it, but he feels the deal is too good to be true because he's getting so much out of it for so little. Rent decided to add one more thing to the deal. He asks the man to give him free meals at his restaurant anytime he wants. The man is brought to tears by this request, and he tells Rent he can eat as much as he wants anytime he wants. He promises to work hard to make sure he doesn't go bankrupt. He thanks Rent for the opportunity, and Rent hands him the crystal, telling him it's time to go home. The man asks Rent how they'll get out of the labyrinth, and Rent points him in a direction. The man tells Rent he can't see anything and Rent is surprised the man can't see the room. Rent tells his follower that they can return to their former location if they go towards that direction, and he believes Rent. He moves towards it, and he's teleported back. Rent looks back to see another room leading to another room, and he decides to come back later to explore it. They return to the city and Rent's disciple takes him to his restaurant named the Red Dragon Pavilion. The places looked better than Rent envisioned. Suddenly, the man's wife rushes out and hugs him glad to see him alive and well. She notices his wounds, and she tells him he needs to go see a doctor ASAP. He tells Isabel his wife that Rent healed him after he was hurt. Isabel didn't notice Rent before, and she apologizes for being oblivious. Her husband tells her Rent saved his life, and he shows her the crystal Rent gave him. Isabel tells him he can't take the crystal, wondering if he hasn't learned his lesson from his past. She tells him they won't be able to foot their bill if they get scammed again. He reassures her that Rent is too kind a person to pull a scam on them. 
He recounts how he told Rent about their debt, and he offered to help. He tells her Rent isn't doing it for free, and he'll be offering his services to Rent in compensation. She asks him if he'll be doing anything dangerous, and he tells her it'll just be simple errands. He tells her he promised Rent free meals at their restaurant, and she wonders if all that's enough to make the deal even. He tells her it was enough to make the deal, and he apologizes for worrying her. The man figures out that Rent is yet to know his name, and he introduces himself as Loris. They both thank him for helping them, and Rent bids them goodbye. He turns and starts walking away, but Loris doesn't want him to go without telling him his name. Rent turns back and asks him to promise not to tell anyone. Loris promises to keep it a secret and to only call him boss. Rent tells Loris his name and Loris tells him they'll always give him a warm welcome at their restaurant. Rent is on his way home, and he thinks it was unfortunate that Loris wasn't a liar and a crook. His vision starts turning red as he thinks it would have been better for him that way. He was hoping to try out something sinister on some bad guys. He arrives at their cottage and his vision gets even more static. He wonders what he's thinking as he falls to his knees and calls Lorraine's name in a sinister voice. He walks into the house with his vision completely covered in red. Lorraine asks him if he encountered the dragon at the labyrinth, and he tells her he didn't. She asks him where he kept the letters from the capital so she can reply to whoever wrote to her. Rent answers her, but she notices he sounds different. She asks him if anything happened to him, and he tells her he's in a good mood. Lorraine is about to ask if something good happened to him, but he just hugs her out of the blue. She wonders if he's drunk, but then she remembers an undead cannot get drunk. Lorraine is enjoying the moment when suddenly Rent bears his teeth and sinks them into her neck. She pushes him off her, wondering if the real Rent is still somewhere inside his body. Rent is surprised by how delicious her juice is, but she calls his name and he regains himself. She uses her magic to knock him down and put him to sleep. She tells him she doesn't mind him eating her as long as he does it when he's sober. Rent wakes up later at night with a splitting headache. He remembers being in the labyrinth with Loris. Lorraine asks him if he feels controlled by any creature or some unnatural impulse. He tells her he's not being controlled and Lorraine is relieved. He apologizes to Lorraine but Lorraine sums it up as an unfortunate accident. Rent tries to tell her it's more than that, but she stops him from talking. She asks him how much he remembers before he blacked out, and he tells her he remembers attacking her. He tells her he remembers meeting a man at the labyrinth, and then he talked about an appetizing meal. That was when he lost control, and once he saw Lorraine he thought she was too delicious to pass up. She tells him it's right for a ghoul to crave a human. She asks him if he remained unhurt after she hit him with her magic, and he tells her he's alright. She tells him to get some rest, and she tells him she'll also get some rest. She's walking to her room, but he tells her he wants to see where he hurt her. She draws back her cloth to reveal the bite mark. She tells him she's out healing potions, but she'll make one the following day. Rent heals the wound, and she's surprised to see he can use his divinity skill to that extent. He tells her he can heal minor injuries, and she tells him the healing sensation is very pleasant. Rent finishes healing her, and she takes off the bandage. Rent can still see some bite marks, and he decides to heal her even more. Lorraine notices he's looking different. He takes off his clothes to look at himself, and she tells him he can tell people the scars on his body are from old battles. He looks at his face in the mirror, and he's surprised to see his mask has also changed. The lower half of his face is showing and Rent tells Lorraine that part should remain hidden. The mask responds by hiding the power part of his face and showing just the upper part of his face. Lorraine wonders if the mask is reacting to his will and Rent changes the mask to show his lower face. Lorraine asks him if he can remove the mask now that it follows his will. Rent tries removing it, but it remains stuck. Lorraine also tries pulling it off his face, but it doesn't budge. She's confused by this, but since he still looks like an undead, she figures it's best the mask stays on. The mask changes back to cover his lower face, and Rent tells her he would leave it like that for the time being. Lorraine also notices that Rent's voice is much clearer now, and he wonders if he went through an existential evolution. He's confused about why his evolution was delayed, because the last time he evolved was right after he defeated a monster. Lorraine wonders if his evolution was caused by the consumption of her flesh and blood. She tells him the idea isn't so far-fetched, because he now looks more like a thrall than a ghoul. Thralls are monsters who are servants of vampires. 
they're ranked lower than vampires and Lorraine tells Rent he looks very similar to one. Rent wonders why he would evolve into a thrall and Lorraine tells him the concept of existential evolution is still a mystery to scholars. She tells him she has a hypothesis and tells him not to fall asleep while she explains it to him. She follows his evolution from a skeleton to a ghoul and asks him if it wasn't a weird change. Rent is lost, and she explains that existential evolution involves a monster turning into a higher rank of itself. She wonders if the ghoul is the only higher ranking version of a skeleton. Rent tells her there are skeleton knights and skeleton soldiers which are higher versions of the skeleton. Lorraine tells him that there have been stories of skeletons changing to ghouls, but nobody knows if it was by chance or for a certain reason. She tells him her theory is he wanted to become a particular monster, and he was thinking in that direction during his evolution. Rent realized that he wanted to become something more human like during his latest transformation. He wonders why he turned into a ghoul instead of a vampire which looks closer to a human. Lorraine tells him it could be similar to the guild system rank and he has to meet certain criteria to evolve. Lorraine explains that when they carried out experiments on lesser animals, it was determined that their evolution was determined by their environment. She tells him it may not have been the environment of the creatures, but the creatures themselves that caused their evolution. She tells him that may be the ability he has. He understands that if he tries hard enough, he can become a vampire and eventually become a human again. She tells him she's not sure he can become a human again. She tells him he may need to do more than slay monsters to achieve his next existential evolution. He understands that he would need to meet many more conditions to become a vampire. He tells Lorraine there is a lot they don't know about his evolution and she tells him their discussion was just a hypothesis because they're not even sure of all they said. She tells him the best bet is to take things step by step and she offers to help him through his journey. He thanks her for offering her help. She tells him it's time for him to become a lab rat, and she tells him to take off his clothes. She tells him all she'll do to him to find out all she needs to know about him. Rent is horrified by the thought of it all, but she tells him they'll start the experiment the following day. Rent is surprised by this, and Lorraine tells him it's common sense to know he's already tired. The next day Lorraine is still sleeping but Rent is already outside swinging his sword to find out how his body feels. He's convinced he feels fine, but he looks at his sword to see its edge jagged. He can't go into the labyrinth with such a sword, and he knows Clope would be upset when he takes it to him. He takes it to Clope, and Clope tells him the sword is irreparable. Rent apologizes for infusing the sword with divinity. Clope now understands why the sword was so battered. He tells Rent there shouldn't be any monsters nearby that require divinity to be defeated, and Rent tells him he encountered a giant skeleton in an uncharted territory. Clope can't believe his ears, and now he understands why Rent has such a weird equipment set. He asks Rent if he fully explored the territory, and Rent tells him he's yet to do that. He asks Clope if he can finish his sword as soon as possible. Clope was already expecting his request, and he tells Rent his sword is not even close to being finished. He gives him a replacement for his battered sword, but this one is slightly better. Rent leaves the shop, happy he got a replacement. As Rent is walking down the street, he spots Isabel and Loris buying foodstuff to prepare meals at their restaurant. Loris announces to everyone that the Red Dragon Pavilion would be reopening that day. Rent is happy to hear this, and he walks away silently. Lorraine explains to Rent how alchemy can make things which are naturally harmless to humans fatal, not just to them but to larger animals as well. Rent is intrigued by the principle of alchemy, and though he previously agreed to go along with Lorraine's experiment, he begins to reconsider for fear of his life. Lorraine mixes up a poison that Rent tries out. He begins to make guttural sounds and Lorraine asks if she should cast the antidote spell. He tells her the poison didn't harm him, but its taste was awful. She tells him he's probably the only one who's lived to complain of the taste of the poison. Lorraine can now conclude that Rent is immune to poison, but somehow he can still make use of herbs and potions. She envies his body, but she's getting sleepy. She asks Rent if he would need to get some sleep now that he's a thrall. He tells her he's fine with very little sleep and Lorraine envies his body even more. She asks him how his appetite is and he tells her that he still faintly craves human meat and juice. She hands him a vial and he asks if it's another kind of poison. She tells him to open it and find out. Rent opens it and sniffs its contents and he's surprised to smell human juice. Lorraine tells him it's her juice which she kept put into the vial and preserved with magic. 
Though she knows Rent is opposed to consuming human juice, she tells him he has to consume it regularly so he doesn't go berserk. Rent pours a drop on his finger and he locks it off. He's surprised by how sweet it tastes and Lorraine asks him if he's satisfied with just one drop. He tells her that drop was enough to quench his thirst and he'll savor the rest bit by bit. Rent tells Lorraine he wants to head out and he advises her to get some sleep. She asks him if he's going back to the labyrinth and he tells her he'll go there but he will stop by the guild first. Lorraine wonders what he's going to be doing at the guild and he tells her he's going there to take a request. She tells him if he's going there to take a request he has to show his adventurer certificate which contains his name. She tells him his look will cause chaos in the guild. Rent tells her though he looks a lot different than he used to, nobody would pay him much attention since he's just a bronze rank adventurer. She tells him his rank is irrelevant because the guild thinks too highly of him because of what he has done for them. She's sure they will surely notice a change in his appearance. Rent tries to downplay it as minor errands, but she tells him he's thinking too low of himself. She tells him there have been rumors that the guild wants to recruit him as a staffer. Renter tells her the rumors didn't reach his ears. He wonders why they want to pick him instead of an accomplished adventurer. She tells him they probably didn't tell him because he wasn't planning to retire just yet. Rent asks her how she knows so much about that, and she tells him she has several acquaintances in the guild. Rent tells her he would be thankful for such an offer from the guild, but he has no interest in retiring and becoming a staffer. Lorraine knew that was going to be his answer, and she wondered what their next step should be. For Rent to rank up he needs to pass the rank promotional exam, but to do that he needs to attain some achievements before he can take the exam. The achievement requires him to take requests in his name, but if the guild finds out about his current state, that would be the end of his adventure life. Lorraine gets an idea and she tells Rent to change his identity and Rent is shocked by her idea. The next day, Rent walks into the guild wearing his full costume and looking quite mysterious. He draws the glances of some adventurers as he enters. He looks around and he feels nostalgic, remembering the last time he entered the guild. He spots Sheila and he's glad to see she's doing well. She notices him and asks him if he's new to the guild. He approaches her and tells her he wants to register as a new adventurer. She hands him a form to fill and she tells him she can fill the other information save for his name. He tells her he can write and she apologizes for assuming he's illiterate. She tells him he only needs to fill in the needed information and he can leave the other parts empty. She tells him to write his specialities and the kind of magic so they can give him more requests. Rent remembers when he first filled out the form 10 years ago. Back then he didn't even know what his specialty was and he ended up writing only his name and age. But since then his convictions haven't changed. He recalls the previous night when Lorraine suggested he register under a different name and he told her double registration is against the rules. She told him that there's no way for the guild to confirm that he's the same person and even if they found out, it won't be a big deal. She told him if he told them his name, they would want to find out why he looked so different. She told him if he goes as a wanderer that wants to become an adventurer, they won't ask about his suspicious outlook. Rent agreed with her and she told him it was too bad he couldn't transfer his previous achievements. She told him he would have to start as an iron rank adventurer. Rent told her he didn't mind because his goal remained the same. His goal is to one day become a mithril rank adventurer. He submits the form to Sheila who looks at his name and she's surprised he's named Rent Vivi. He asks her why she's surprised and she tells him an adventurer named recently went missing. He asks her if she's talking about Rent Fena and she tells him that's who she's talking about. She asks him how he knows about Rent and he tells her he heard it from Lorraine. She asks him if he's related to Lorraine and he tells her they are related and he's lodging with her. She tells him she heard a strange person was visiting Lorraine regularly and she secretly hoped it was Rent. She tells Rent he filled out the form properly. She tells him to wait for her while she handles the registration procedure. Rent is glad he told her he was related to Lorraine, he didn't want the rumors to ruin her reputation. Rent is positive he can start afresh since his name is very common and it's not strange to see adventurers with a weird getup. Sheila comes back and hands him his ID card, telling him he's now an iron rank adventurer. She tells him to take care of himself, and he takes his ID card and walks away. He goes to the labyrinth, and he hears a screech somewhere in the labyrinth. He wonders if it's a goblin, then he hears the voices of some adventurers engaged in a battle close by. The voice sounds like a young person, and Rent moves to the direction it's coming from. He finds the two adventurers battling a goblin. 
The male adventurer is a swordsman and the female is a healer. Judging by their looks, he figures out that they are novices. Rent can see they work well together, so he decides to leave them be and walk away. Rent used to help greenhorns around the labyrinth, but he can't anymore because his current appearance would scare them. Rent decides to go back to the hidden room before someone else finds it. Rent knows information about undiscovered parts of the labyrinth is valuable, so he wants to explore the hidden area and report it to the guild. This would be an achievement, especially for someone with such a low rank. He walks to the teleportation circle on the other side of the room, and he's teleported to another room. He walks into the room and looks around to see children's toys on the floor. He tries to pick up a teddy bear, but it scatters in his hands. He walks further into the room and goes through some curtains. He sees a skeleton lying on the bed, but it doesn't look like an undead. He's surprised to find out someone is living inside the labyrinth. He tries to pick up the flower beside the skeleton when someone suddenly speaks up behind him. The lady asks him what he's doing and he doesn't like his chances with her. He tells her he was searching the room for something valuable since he's an adventurer. She tells him he was searching for something to steal and she asks him if he's willing to lose his life for it. She tells him there are some things she can't forgive and one of those is having her place disturbed. She attacks Rent and he tries to use his divinity to block it, but the attack is too powerful and pushed back into the wall. His clothes disintegrate and he's hurt by her attack, but he manages to get back on his feet. The lady is surprised by how his body looks and he tells her didn't end up like that of his own volition. Though she wanted to attack again, she now understands how Rent managed to enter the room and she relaxes. She apologizes to him for misunderstanding him and burning his clothes. She gives him her coat to compensate and she tells him to keep the place a secret because it's special. She tells him no other person can enter the room unless he's with them and she gives him an acacia map so he doesn't return empty-handed. Rent opens the map, but it's empty. She tells him the map magically records anywhere where its owner has traveled through. She tells him their trade is complete and she will be sending him back to the entrance. She tells him she would wish him good health, but it won't be of any use to him in his current condition. Rent's vision becomes fuzzy and he wakes up at the entrance of the labyrinth. He returns to Lorraine and explains everything to her. She asks him if he's under some kind of curse because of the things that happened to him. He tells her it's not his fault he's running into them and she tells him that's why she said he's cursed. She looks at the map and she tells him it's safe to use. He asks her how to use it and she tells him it didn't react to her magic. She tells him to try his magic and when he does, the map becomes filled. Rent recognizes it as the labyrinth of the moon's reflection and Lorraine is amazed. She notices a mark and asks Rent what it is but Rent doesn't know. He points at it and it shows names and Rent recognizes the names as a pair of new adventurers he saw in the labyrinth. Lorraine figures out that the map is showing the names of people in the labyrinth and their positions. Lorraine can't believe how valuable the map is. She asks Rent if he can bring up the path of other labyrinths and he tries bringing up the map of another labyrinth. The map changes, but it's not complete and Rent remembers the lady said the map only records places he has been to. Rent asks her to take a look at the robe to make sure it's not cursed and she tells him he would know if it's cursed since he already has it equipped. She tells him the robe is of good quality with high magic resistance and good defense. She tells him its defense is more than regular armor and he tells her he got a good deal out of his expedition. She tells him he should be more worried about the identity of the woman who almost sent him to meet his ancestors. He tells her he doesn't know the lady's identity, but she is very powerful. He thinks she would be stronger than a gold-class adventurer. She tells him she's curious about the room he found because it means someone can make living spaces in a labyrinth. Rent tells her he would visit the labyrinth the next day, and she commends him for being brave despite him almost losing his life. He tells her the lady didn't tell him not to return, she only told him not to tell the guild about the room. Lorraine tells him it seems the lady wants to be left alone, and he tells her he'll just go back to talk. He goes to the labyrinth the next day, and he reflects on Lorraine's words about him being cursed. He remembers the day he met the dragon and got cursed, and how he can't take off the cursed mask. He knows most people would pity him, but he sees his situation as an opportunity to get stronger and get the highest adventurer rank. He arrives at the entrance, but the entrance is gone. He looks at the map, but that area is empty, and he figures out that the lady doesn't want him coming back just yet. Back at the guild, Sheila is discussing with an adventurer who asks her if she's heard from Rent. She tells him she doesn't have any news, and the adventurer tells her to keep him posted. 
she can see that a lot of adventurers are worried about him because he inspired them. He also inspired her to be a good build employee and she remembers when she first met him. Rent suddenly appears in front of her and she apologizes for being lost in thought. He hands her a request and tells her he wants to take it up. She sees that he needs to fight off three strong orcs and she tells him she can't recommend the request for an iron rank adventurer. He tells her he has defeated orcs before and she grants him the request. She tells him not to do anything reckless and he tells her he understands because he has just one life. He tells her he understands that fact more than anyone else. Lorraine is still contemplating how Rent would take the promotional exam with his current looks. She suggests he register at the guild under a different name and Rent protests, telling her it's against the rules to register twice. She tells him the guild can't confirm he's the same person and it won't be a big deal if he's eventually found out. She tells him if they find out his true identity, they will want to know how he ended up as an undead. But if he registers as a random traveler looking to become an adventurer, no one would pay attention to his suspicious look. The only downside is that he'll have to start from the lowest adventurer rank since he can't transfer his previous achievements. Rent tells her he doesn't mind that because his goal is to one day become the highest ranking adventurer. Rent returns to the guild after completing his first request and Sheila is shocked by how quickly he completed it. He brings out his magic bag and hands over the orc meat. She commends how well the meat was cut and preserved, telling him the request giver would be pleased. Rent notices something is amiss and he asks her what's wrong. She tells him to wait for a moment. She walks away and some adventurers who overheard Rent saying he slayed three orcs wonder how he was able to do it since he's a low rank adventurer. Rent overhears them, and he understands that he completed a request that was beyond his rank. Sheila comes back with a scroll that she hands over to Rent. She tells him she spoke with the higher up at the guild. She asks him if he would like to participate in the bronze rank ascension exam. The guild usually doesn't allow newly registered adventurers to partake in the exam, but the higher ups were convinced of Rent's capabilities. Rent accepts the offer. Later at night, Lorraine is surprised Rent was already asked to participate in the Bronze Rank Ascension exam, but she thinks he deserves it given his skills. She asks him what name he used to register at the guild, and he tells her he used Rent Vivi. Lorraine almost chokes on her tea and asks him why he chose to use Vivi as his last name. She tells him the guild officials are familiar with her family name and they may get suspicious of him. He tells her he didn't want people to think that a weird man was staying over at her house, so he named himself as a relative. She understands his perspective, but she tells him she doesn't care about her public image. Everyone already thinks of her as a worthless scholar who couldn't make it to capital. She doesn't care if people look at her weirdly anymore. Rent tells her she's helped him too much already and he didn't want to cause her more trouble. On the topic of helping, she tells him he does so many chores in the house that she may end up being indebted to her. Rent tells her that can never be possible because he only retained his sense of humanity because of her. Lorraine tells him he can be her roommate for eternity without paying rent. She tells him since they're now relatives, he doesn't have to be so reserved around her. Rent is even more grateful to her now. The next day, Rent goes into the guild and a guild official asks him who he is. Rent introduces himself and tells the man he's there for the ascension exam. The man now recognizes him and Sheila calls out to him, telling him she didn't expect him to come to the guild that day. She thought he would be studying to take part in the next exam since he didn't have time to prepare for it. Rent tells her the next exam is months away and he can't wait. An adventurer comes late happy to have made it, but Rent knows he will have some points deducted for being late. A guild official calls the attention of all the iron rank adventurers. He tells them the bronze rank ascension exam is about to begin. The first exam will test the adventurer's knowledge about guild regulations, monster materials, and everything in between. Those who pass the knowledge exam will be allowed to partake in the practical exam. The practical exam always changes with each set of adventurers. Brent remembers he was asked to pick up some herbs when he first did the exam. The official asks the adventurers to follow him and Sheila wishes Rent good luck. The adventurers sit in a room to take the written exam and Rent looks around. More adventurers are taking the exam than he expected. He recognizes a girl as one of the duo adventurers he stumbled upon in the labyrinth. He figures out that her partner will be participating in the exam. There aren't many commoners in the town who can write. Rent was lucky to study writing and herb language back when he was still in his village. He thought that the knowledge would be vital to his dream to become an adventurer. That was why that kind of exam was a piece of cake for him, coupled with the fact that he had previously taken it. 
After the exam, some adventurers aren't happy with their score. Sheila congratulates Rent for getting a perfect score because not many people can achieve that. Rent tells her he's just happy he passed the exam and he asks her what the practical exam will be. She tells him he'll form a party and perform a guild request. She pairs him with Reyes and Lola, the duo adventurers, and they form a party. Reyes tells him he's a swordsman who fights using spirit to raise his stamina and he'll be the vanguard. Lola tells him she's a mage who can also use healing arts so she'll be the support. Rent tells them he's also a swordsman who uses mana and spirit, and he's glad to be working with them. The guild official comes to address the adventurers, telling them they'll be performing a guild request. He tells them the location is at the labyrinth of the new moon, and he hands them a map. He tells them their objective is to reach the designated point on the map, and they have until sunset to achieve this. One adventurer asks if they'll all be going to the same location, and he tells them they'll complete the same request. He tells them the first party to complete the quest will be rewarded. They all understand it'll be a competition to be the first party to complete the request. They arrive at the labyrinth and the other adventurers rush inside. Lays asks Rent if he's ever been to the labyrinth and Rent tells him he has. Reyes tells him he has also been to the labyrinth and Lola tells him they didn't get very far. Reyes tells her they'll go deeper when they earn their bronze rank. They are about to go inside but Rent stops them. He tells them they need to purchase a map and Lola asks him why they can't use the map from the guild. Rent tells her the map was printed 15 years ago and Lola realizes the map could be unreliable. Rent walks over to a stall and he tells the vendor he wants to buy a map. The vendor tells him the price and they're shocked by the amount. Rent tells him he just needs the map for the first floor and he makes a good bargain. The vendor agrees to it and he hands Rent the map. Reyes wonders if the vendor's map would be accurate and Rent asks him to compare it with the one from the guild. They compare them and they can spot some differences. The new map also shows the location of the traps in the labyrinth, and they are happy they can make their way through the labyrinth without worry. The vendor advises them to follow Rent closely if they want to pass the exam. Lola wonders why the maps are so different and Rent tells him the guild may intentionally mislead them. He tells them to never let their guard down because the exam was designed to test their mettle as adventurers. Reyes isn't too happy about this and Rent tells him the guild can be nasty sometimes. They enter the labyrinth and they're soon intercepted by some skeletons. Rent tells them not to let up their guard against the skeleton and Reyes heeds his advice. Lola uses her magic to enhance his skills and he charges at the skeleton. They defeat them easily and Rent is impressed with their capabilities despite their young age. Reyes is having some problems with one skeleton, but Rent comes to his aid. Lola is worried about the unusual number of monsters they had to face. Rent thinks something must have attracted them, and he walks up to a pouch on the ground. Reyes wonders how skeletons can be lured and Rent shows him the pouch of incense. Reyes takes a sniff of it wondering why it was in the labyrinth. Rent tells him he will soon find out because there's an ambush laid for them around the corner. Lola tells him the monster shouldn't be that smart and Rent tells her the monsters aren't. He tells her it's other adventurers trying to ambush them. Reyes is scared of fighting other adventurers. Rent decides to go on first and he tells them to be prepared to back him up. Rent walks up to the corner cautiously and swiftly turns around it. An adventurer tries to attack him but he blocks it. Reyes and Lola run up to him and Rent leaves the first adventurer to Reyes since he's the vanguard. He rushes to the other adventurers in the ambush party. The archer of the ambush party tries to bring him down with an arrow, but he dodges it. The archer tries to notch another arrow, but Rent knocks him down before he can. The mage tries to take Rent down with a fire spell, but Rent cuts through it, which scares the daylight out of the mage. Rent breaks his staff and knocks him out. Reyes is having some trouble with the swordsman and Lola comes to his aid. She casts a bright light to distract the swordsman and Reyes uses that opportunity to launch his attack. Rent can see they're doing well, so he decides to leave them to it. They take down the swordsman with some teamwork and they capture the adventurers. Lola wonders why fellow participants would ambush them. Reyes tells her they did it because they want them to fail since the examiner told all adventurers to do whatever they want. Rent tells them monsters aren't the only harmful thing in the labyrinth. They now understand why adventurers should never let their guard down. Reyes tells Rent he would follow his lead from then on, and Rent tells them they have to proceed carefully. After they leave, another adventurer comes out of the shadows, impressed that Rent was able to predict the ambush. He frees the ambush party, and he tells them Rent noticed they work for the guild. 
they wonder who he is, and the shadow adventurer tells them he reminds him of someone else. He thinks his sister's information was accurate. Sheila goes into the guildmaster's office, and he sternly tells her he heard a rumor about Rent Vivi. She asks him what he heard, and he tells her people think he may be a culprit. He tells her he doesn't have a previous record, and he came out of nowhere, which makes him very suspicious. He tells her to report back to him if she finds out anything about him. Rent and his party arrive at a door and Lola figures out that a labyrinth boss is behind the door. Rent asks Raze if they've ever fought a boss, and he tells him they have never because two iron rank adventurers won't survive it. Suddenly a party comes up behind them, and they're surprised they didn't get there first. Rent is relieved that more adventurers have arrived. The leader of the party makes fun of Rent's party and asks Lola to join their party since she's cute, but Raze tells them to back off. They're about to pick a fight, but Rent points his sword at the party leader. The leader tells him he was just joking and Rent tells him he doesn't take jokes well. The leader tells Rent they weren't trying to go in before them, but Rent tells him they can go in because they want to take a break. They apologize to Rent, and they go in. They think Rent is stupid for giving up his spot and letting them go in first. Raze thinks they'll lose because they let another party in first, but Lola notices that Rent has a plan. Raze thinks that Rent wants them to see what a boss fight is like, and Rent tells him it's not only that. The rude party cries out in pain, and they run out carrying the injured member. Lola recognizes some of the guild staff, and Rent tells them they won't be ice guide, even if they lose the boss fight. Raze motivates himself to enter the boss's room. Rent is glad that Raze was able to strengthen his resolve, and they walk into the boss room. Raze wonders if Rent just wanted them to see how a boss fight would go, but Rent tells him he also wants him to know that he won't lose his life if he loses. Rent tells him he can turn back from a fight he knows he can't win, but Raze knows that if he walks away from this fight, he won't be able to ever return. If that happens, Raze knows he won't ever become a true adventurer, and Lola is moved by his resolve. Rent can see that he has made his resolve, and they walk into the boss room. They look around the room, watching out for the boss so it doesn't take them by surprise. Suddenly, a huge transparent slime with a crystal at its core rises from the ground before them. They all get ready to battle the Grand Slime and Raze is confident they won't lose like the previous party of adventurers. Raze thinks it would be a good idea to write in their report that they defeated the boss after the first party lost to it. But Rent thinks they are getting the wrong idea because the request didn't ask them to defeat the boss. It would have been easier for them if the previous party defeated the boss. But Rent sees it as an opportunity to learn about the hardships of life. Raze rushes at the Grand Slime and it's about to attack him by he predicts it and dodges perfectly. Rent tells him to aim for the slime's core, but as soon as Raze sinks his sword into the slime, he can't drive it any further. The slime knocks him to the ground, but he gets up and dodges its next series of attacks. Lola is about to help him with her magic, but Rent tells her to focus on gathering her mana. Rent is confident that they would be able to take down the Grand Slime with their capabilities if they work together efficiently. Before they entered the room, Rent told Rays that physical attacks don't work against the slime. He told him they would have to use magic attacks against it, and he asked Lola if she could cast a strong fire spell. Lola told him she could, but it would take time for her to finish casting it. Rent told her he would handle the slime's attack while she was casting it, but Rays told him he'd like to handle that. Rays is barely holding his own against the slime so Lola asks Rent to give him a hand. The slime is about to overwhelm Rays with its attacks, but Rent steps on and fends it off. He keeps slicing through the blobs the slime throws at them, and Rays does the same as well. Lola finally gathers enough mana to cast her spell, and she informs them of this. She casts her fire spell at the slime, and it melts. Lola is happy her spell worked well against it, and Rent tells Raze to finish off the slime before it regenerates. Raze cuts through the slime's core, and they're glad they were able to defeat a boss. Rent brings out a bottle, and tells them they need to gather the slime fluid because it can fetch them a handful of money. They begin filling their bottles with the slime fluid, but some adventurers use that opportunity to run past them and head for the finish line. Raze is about to go after them, but Lola tells him to let them go forward. Rent knew that Lola would notice that there was a trap ahead. A sleeping gas is suddenly released and the adventurers pass out. Rent expected the trap because people tend to let their guard down just before they reach their goal. Rent tells them even if the adventurers reach the goal before them, it wouldn't be a problem. Lola figures out that the test isn't about finishing it first. She reminds Raze that the guild master never said the party who finishes first is the one that passed the test. 
he only said the first party to finish would receive a perk. Everyone misunderstood that as the party who finished first would win the test because they led them to believe that. Reyes now realizes he shouldn't have been worried about finishing first all this time. Brent tells him they just have to complete the test within the time limit and Reyes tells him he would have appreciated the information a lot sooner. Rent tells him he has to be able to think for himself as a first-rate adventurer. They get to the final destination and open the door to the room. A guild official welcomes them, telling them they are the first ones to reach the destination. They don't trust him, and they demand he shows them proof of his identity as a guild official. He shows them his official letter, and they now believe him. He hands them bronze crests, and he tells them once they present the crests to the receptionist, they would be confirmed as bronze rank adventurers. Reyes asks him about the perks the guild master said the first party will get. The official gives them some potions as their gifts for being first and Reyes is so happy to take them. Rent asks them to escort him through a detour on the way back. They go down a flight of stairs and Reyes thinks they'll get to the second level when they go through the door. Rent tells him the labyrinth is a place that defies human understanding, and he's about to witness that firsthand. They go through the door and find themselves in a huge serene lush with greenery and a sun overhead. Rays is amazed, and he wonders how the sun is shining underground. Lola heard stories about the scenery of the labyrinth changing with each floor, but she never expected it to be this breathtaking. Rent tells them this is the kind of world that they would be facing henceforth, and they're both hyped up. Rays wants to explore the forest a bit, but Rent tells him they have to return to the guild to complete the test, and he's bummed out by this. They make their way back to the guild, and when they get there both Reyes and Lola are exhausted because of the traps they had to go through. They now fully understand why Rent said the guild can be very nasty sometimes. They submit the crests to Sheila at the reception desk, and she confirms the end of their bronze rank ascension exam. Reyes asks her if they're now bronze rank adventurers, but she seems skeptical. A guild official gives her a report and tells her she can confirm them as bronze rank adventurers. Reyes asks her what is happening and Rent tells him the official was watching them the entire time during the exam but the others didn't realize it. The official tells them an adventurous personality becomes more apparent during the exam and they can't promote anyone with an unfit personality. Lola asks him how they did and Sheila tells her they did well and are now officially bronze rank adventurers. Reyes and Lola are overjoyed that they passed. They are glad they left the village against the advice of their parents to become adventurers. Rent is glad he has achieved his bronze rank once again. They leave the guild and he thanks Reyes and Lola for their assistance. Reyes tells him they should be the ones thanking him and he promises they won't forget the lessons he taught them. He tells Rent he feels like a proper adventurer for the first time thanks to him. Lola would have loved for them to stay together, but she can tell that Rent has a different goal. She knows that he taught them different things during the test so they would be able to fight on their own. They tell him he'll always be their friend, and they hope they'll meet again someday. They get on their carriage and leave the city. Sheila thinks they are nice kids and Rent tells her that though he was guiding them, they also helped him realize some things. Sheila tells Rent she would like to ask him a question and Rent realizes that she has figured out his true identity. He asks her if the guild will punish him for what he did, but Sheila tells him she's the one who'll be asking the questions. Rent tells her he won't show himself at the guild again if they've discovered his secret. He's about to walk away but Sheila holds him back and tells him she just wants to know what happened to his body. They decide to go somewhere private and though Rent wanted to run away, he heard the worry in Sheila's voice and he knew he had to answer her. They enter a private room and Rent tells her he's in some deep trouble but he doesn't want anyone to intervene, including the guild. She tells him she hasn't informed the guild about him and he wonders why she's keeping it a secret. She tells him she's not sure he's the same Rent and she wants to confirm his identity herself. She tells him she told the official who watched them during the exam a little about him, but he's her brother so she assures him that he won't leak his secret. She asks him to tell her what happened to his body. She knows Rent won't trust her easily so she presents him with a magic contract she had made. Whoever signs a magic contract and breaks their oath will incur a penalty enforced by magic. Sheila promises to resign from the guild and register as a slave in a country if she leaks his secret. Rent tells her she's doing way too much and he asks her why she's going to such lengths for him. She tells him she just wants to help him because she only got so far because of him. She tells him there are many people indebted to him, though he may not realize it. Rent decides to sign the contract and explain everything to Sheila. 
After signing, he wonders how he'll tell her the story, but he decides to just show her to save time. He takes off his hood and tweaks his mask to reveal his eyes. Sheila gets a glimpse of his face and she looks frightened. Rent sees that his face scares her and he tells her it may be better she doesn't know more about what happened to him. She tells him she doesn't want to remain ignorant about his situation. She asks him how it happened and he tells her he turned into an undead. Sheila tells him that's impossible and he can understand her confusion. Rent tells her to have a rethink to see if she can actually help him. He tells her he has no intention of hurting anyone, but he knows she can't easily trust him in his current state. He gets up to leave the room but Sheila stops him. She tells him she believes that he won't attack anyone even if he's an undead because he's still the same kind person he's always been. She tells him she will help him because he has helped a lot of people before, including her. She takes his hand and she assures him she'll help him if it's a matter relating to the guild. They both go to Lorraine's house and she's surprised to see Sheila with Rent. Sheila tells her she has something to discuss with her and Sheila is surprised she's paying her a visit so late. Lorraine asks Rent if he laid his hands on Sheila, but Sheila tells her he only relayed some information to her. Lorraine invites her into the house and she apologizes that her place is messy. Rent knows the place isn't messy because he cleaned up before leaving. Lorraine asks Sheila what she knows and she tells her Rent told her he was turned into a monster, but he doesn't attack people. Lorraine is surprised Sheila still decided to pay her a visit after hearing that. She tells her she's like a young girl going into the house of a witch and a monster, and she shouldn't be surprised if she gets boiled to be used as dinner. Sheila tells her she's nothing but a scholar but Lorraine tells her she's just using that title as a cover to perpetrate her evil deeds. She tells Sheila she hunts for young girls during the night to help keep her skin smooth. Sheila laughs it off, but Lorraine tells her that is the monster Rent currently is and the smile disappears off Sheila's face. Rent knows that if Sheila says the wrong thing, Lorraine would take her out without hesitation. Sheila tells Lorraine she knows that's what Rent is and Lorraine is satisfied with her answer. She tells Sheila she wasn't being mean to her and they decide to have dinner together. After having dinner, Sheila praises Rent's cooking skills and he tells her he learnt it from his hometown. Sheila gives Rent the payment for all the housework he does and he takes a drop from the bottle. Sheila realizes that Rent is a lesser vampire. Lorraine asks about the magic contract and Rent tells her the contract entails that Sheila won't reveal his identity. Sheila tells her Rent has been catching the attention of a lot of people. She tells them there have been many cases of novice adventurers going missing all over the kingdom. Lorraine asks her how they know it wasn't done by Monster and Sheila tells her they don't find the adventurer's belongings. The guild thinks it's a mass kidnapping and because of Rent's sudden appearance and suspicious look, they think he's the mastermind behind it. Sheila tells them Rent is too good to be a novice and other adventurers are spreading rumors about him out of jealousy. Rent is happy, he's good enough to make people jealous, but Lorraine tells him it's nothing to joke about. Sheila tells him he's in a sticky situation and he decides to lay off labyrinth exploration for a while. Sheila asks him to be more specific, and he decides to stay away from labyrinths for about four days. Raze and Lola are at the guild looking for a third adventurer to join their party so they can explore the second floor. The guild master can see that the new adventurers are enthusiastic. He asks Sheila about Rent Vivi who participated in the exams, and she tells him he has a suitable personality. He asks her for an update on Rent Fena because they wanted him to become a guild staff when he retired. A little commotion catches his attention, and he tells Sheila to take care of it. Sheila tells him the new Rent is also a wonderful adventurer. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.